Well, it's now time to machine the crank pin, which I've got a piece of material mounted in the chuck. Uh, it's to go into the crank itself, which I've machined off camera. It was very difficult to get the camera in there, which it sometimes is with small parts. The crack pin will go in the small end. Obviously the large end will go on the crankshaft itself. That's all ready to go. So we'll proceed to machine the crack pin. Just take a facing cut. Just take a light feed just to clean up the shaft a bit and get the lamp right. This diameter has to be turned down to a quarter of an inch. We'll just check the length. Should be seven eighths less than sixteen. Yeah, that gives you a bit to face off. Okay folks, what I'll do is I'll machine that down to coil an inch and bring it back. It's a bit noisy here today, we've got workmen outside the workshop. Thank you. Right folks, we've got this down to a quarter of an inch. In actual fact, it's Two foul over. I don't know if you can see that or not. Very difficult to see on this camera. Get the focus. So there you can see it's two foul over. 
uh, that'll allow me some wiggle room when I ream the crank bush. If I have to, I can take the tooth out off in the lathe later. But I like a little bit of wiggle room. So I will proceed to um, do the next size down, which is the part that goes for the crank itself. And I'll bring you back. Okay, I'll continue to turn this next size down and again bring you back later. We've got the crankshaft mounted in the milling vise. Uh, I couldn't show you setting up because the camera gets in the way again, but I'm sure you've all seen pieces levelled in a milling vise. So we'll go ahead and just drill this. Okay, that's the two millimeter hole. So now we'll have to taper ream that to fit a taper pin. The reamer I'm using is a number two. I believe it's a number two reamer. Very small tapered reamer. Uh, I have to take it very easy. Of course, it's done by hand. Might be very difficult to show you, but we'll see what we can do. Proceed to ream this hole out very slowly. Just doing it by hand very slowly. Just use a little. WD-40 and because it's cutting with steel as well as cast iron if it was just cast iron it wouldn't matter you can see it cutting quite well at least to cast iron This is where you pray you don't break a rumor off. Slow and steady.
back. We'll test fit the tapered pin. We've still got a long way to go yet. Once more, you can see that's about right. So it's now time to drive her home. I'll put a, a tiny bit of Loctite on this. For no other reason, I'm just a bit more security. Shouldn't need it, but you never know. So what I'll do is I'll drive the pin in because you don't want to see me hitting the pin into a hole and I'll bring you back. Okay, you can see the pin. That's the top. Driven hard in. And that's the pin coming out the bottom. I'll cut that off but I'm going to leave it a bit proud. Just so I can file or grind later. Just depends. On real steam engines, they wouldn't have worried about cleaning that up, so I may not also. Might leave a bit proud either side. We'll see when we're finished. Oh, well, there's the crankshaft, the crank, and the crank pin all completed. Now it has to be polished up when I'm finished before final assembly. But again, really pleased. I've left a little bit of excess on the end of the shaft. Again, I could clean it up, but I'll see. I like to have it there. But everything else is fine. I'm tending to want to leave that pin as is. So people can see that it's a tapered pin. But I may lineage it back. when I do the final assembly. Just see how it looks. Your comments would be grateful if you can tell me if you want me to leave it or to clean it back flush with the crank itself. But it's come out alright. Once it's polished up it'll look great. Thank you.